Why, hello there. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you could hear me okay. It's good to be back. What's up, Sean, Carol, Andrew? Awesome. Jade, good to have everybody here. Michelle, it's good to be back, by the way. We took a last week off at Adobe, and I could hardly remember my, uh, my name at this point. So uh, feel free to do a quick shout out. It's a beautiful day here in lovely uh, Colorado. Hopefully, hopefully everybody in the US had a good fourth. And hopefully everybody's staying safe and washing your hands, doing all the things you're supposed to because it's actually not that hard. But what we're going to do is we're going to dive into the uh, Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, which is going to be really fun. In fact, let me get ready right now because what we're going to do is we're going to dive into Photoshop. Specifically, Photoshop Summer Reading Program is what we're going to do. We're going to go through it chapter by chapter through Photoshop, uh, sort of mastering uh, not only the fundamentals, but also some fun stuff as well. So I have a number of uh, books that we'll tackle. We're gonna make some book covers, easily translatable to you know, Instagram posts, all that good stuff. But you can see right next to me, right here, boop. Uh, we're gonna get into liquify content aware tools, uh, you know, generating image assets, all sorts of things. It's gonna be really fun and I'm thankful you are here. Awesome. Uh, so this is really good. I'm uh, glad everybody's here. Hello, Anthony. Feel free to shout out where you're from. I always like to hear that because that makes fun conversation starter. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive into this. Today is just, um, yeah, new specs. They're not, they're fake. They're fake actually, but I'm totally into glasses. <laughs> okay, so enough of that. Let's kind of switch gears because actually let me go ahead and show you this discord, by the way. This is actually where the conversation will continue to happen even beyond today, which I'm going to pull that up on my screen, but essentially this is the URL. So if it is your uh, first time joining us, get it? It's like summer. I got this little uh, popsicle reading program. That's what we're doing. All right, so uh, that being said, just go to that URL. Uh, this is where the conversation is going to be happening. You can see today, not much is going on. We're, this is just really where you get a sneak peek at all the projects that we're going to work on, okay? Uh, but really, it is this URL right up here. Behance.net forward slash challenge forward slash Photoshop. So if you're joining me over there in the YouTube land, head over to Behance. Uh, that's where the conversation is going. So. Uh, awesome. Cal from Toronto. Janine from Barrington, Rhode Island. Ah, Rhode Island's the... I have not been to Rhode Island. Should I go? Should I go? The answer is probably yes. So there's the URL, by the way. You can click over to the challenge tab also. Uh, daily, this will change. Uh, but this is just our chance to put together our Behance project where everything is going to come together. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And yeah, like Sam said, welcome back, everyone. I missed you. Uh, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm happy I'm able to form words, which is really good. Um, but we're going to uh, create a number of projects that are going to go on Behance. So uh, right over here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a project. And this one project is going to, co going to contain uh, all of the daily creative challenges. You don't have to do things this way, but that's how I would set it up, right? So again, we want to empower you, to teach you and inspire you and all that good stuff. Um, get your job if that's what you're into. I don't know. Either way, this is what we would typically do. We would build, we're gonna build out a project over the course of nine days, a bunch of individual projects that make this creative challenge over the course of nine challenges specifically, and we'll put them on a project here, okay? All right, Chase from Portland, Oregon, into it. So uh, we can add an image as well. So uh, since this is our fancy summer reading program, I'm gonna just do a header. And this is typically what I'll do with the project is I'll make a header, I'll launch Photoshop. We had an update to Photoshop uh, a couple weeks, two weeks, three weeks ago. Uh, Mid-June, basically, the 16th. So just make sure you have uh, Photoshop updated and uh, we'll be well on our way to getting this party started. All right, I've gone over a lot in four minutes. Jeez. Whew. Sean from Germany, what's up? Good morning from Canada. All right. So right in here... <clears throat> The thing I would do is like for a header, by the way, you can measure, I do this all, I do this for like everything. You could do uh, research and all that stuff. On a Mac, I'll do Shift-Command-4. Shift-Command-4 will give you this little crosshair. 
on a Mac. So I'll typically like measure stuff out using, it's basically you're doing a screen capture, a segment of the screen, but that's kind of how I figure the size of this uh, this header, basically. So that's what I typically do. I know it's about 1400 by, it could be 300, it could be 200, but about 1400 by 300. And that's gonna be the header that I'm gonna make right now. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Glad you like the glasses. I don't know how long they're gonna last. I'm noticing they're either uh, smudged or something's happening, but it's kind of hard to see, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right, so the size I'm doing for the summer reading program for this header, 1400 by 300, right? That's what I want, right? We'll just keep the color as white, click OK, there it is. Command zero, make it uh, fill the sort of width of the screen in this case, right? And, and I can jump in and I can start type on, typing Photoshop on one layer, daily creative challenge. All right, something like that. That seems to work for me. I have these two layers as well, right? I could take those two, I can make sure they're flush left. We get this options bar at the top for anything that we have selected. Kind of move those around as a unit, right? Like so. Let me shrink that down just a touch. Cool. Uh, you don't have the right panel on Behance. Well, what did you do, break it? Cornell, I think you broke it. Sometimes your screen, if it's not white, it might be below. So if you got a smaller monitor or the browser's not filling the screen, it means that content has dropped below the video, just so you know. Okay, so what also happened a couple of, uh, weeks ago is we actually updated all of the icons right down here at the bottom, right? So I actually wanna grab an icon uh, luckily, I already have this library of fancy icons that Terry White was kind enough to put together, uh, but that's what I will do, is just kind of drop that right over here, like so, taking all three of these things, scaling them down, right, into place, and get this party started. Boom, there we are. Okay. Uh, oh, you're, in, you're just on the left side and it's dark. That's interesting. Uh, so... Oh, thanks, Dessa. Too kind. All right, so uh, this is what I have. Um, you could do a lot uh, in the, when you're creating a project, you can actually already do a lot. You can insert an image. Guess what? You could insert text, right? Um, so keep that in mind. You can go in and insert text, and this is like, you know, we could say uh, daily creative challenge ENGE for July. 2020. Is that what year it is? I don't even know. <laughs> Maybe I just don't want it to be this year. But here we go with this text. We can see this is just paragraph text. I could just as easily do a header as well. So whether you do it in Photoshop or in Behance, uh, it's totally up to you. By the way, the reason I'm actually doing it in, um, uh, let's do hosted by Paul Tranny, right, like that. Okay, so the reason I'm actually doing it in Photoshop is because I wanna add some beautiful graphics, right? So right over here, Photoshop, let's throw in some graphics, if that works for you. Uh, awesome. Oh, you got a birthday week? Monica, you get a whole birthday week? Usually, per it's usually just a birthday, right? Um, but you go, you do your thing. Right, so since this is a summer reading program, we're gonna cover all the classics, you know, Picture of Dorian Gray, um, a number of them that I can't think of, Jane Eyre, just picked a number of uh, classic books uh, that we'll dive into. I'm gonna give you a sneak preview of them, but since it's book related, I'm gonna go ahead and take this image. This is actually what I, I took this photo um, of my bookcase, which is like right over there. So these are all like my, my current books like the likability factor, the millionaire mind. Most of my stuff is like all nonfiction, but you also have art right over here, the illustrator in America from 1880, 1980. And of course the He-Man uh, and the Masters of the Universe complete character guide as well. But I wanna use this as like my background, Guns, Germs, and Steel, got a lot of, it's all nonfiction mostly. There's some Edgar Allan Poe in there. But taking that, I just took that snapshot. If you want this image, I'll be happy to give it to you if you wanna make your own header today, by the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. 
It's just a quick link that I'm gonna paste into chat and you could go ahead and use this same background if you want. We have awesome, this is a Superman bubble bath. <laughs> is what that is, <laughs> right next to some Malcolm Gladwell. But we'll copy that, we'll paste that into uh, our current file that we're working on like so, okay? So anyways, I'm just making a header. No big deal. If you are starting out in Photoshop, you are at the right place. Even if you've been doing this a while, I'm sure gonna, you're gonna learn some tips. I have a tendency to go a little fast, especially after I've had a lot of coffee. Um, but I think a lot of these shortcuts help out a lot. Typically, when you're working in Photoshop, the properties panel is your new best friend, which didn't exist when I started out in Photoshop. And now if I have text selected, guess what? It's gonna give me the character and all the options for text or whatever you have selected. So those are your two best friends. Right here, you have your properties panel and your layers panel. So from there, I can have both those layers selected, change them both to uh, white. Maybe I'll change this one actually to that lovely blue, something like that, and we'll be well on our way. All right, let's take a look, just making sure everything is good to go and it looks like it is. All right, cool. All right, we're back. All right, so this is pretty this is a very big file, excuse me, this layer is pretty large, okay? You could do a, a Command T, which is transform, okay? So it's the equivalent edit of edit, free transform. Just do a Command T, boom, and then Command zero will bring everything into your current view. Okay, so that's how I kind of determine the size of something to move it around, okay? All right. Oh, you're used to watching me, so you're used to me going fast, that's good. So this is really good, this is important, this is a lot that we're covering, but uh, if I do a Command T and I shrink this down, it's going to be destructive, which means I'm losing all those pixels in case I want to size it back up again. So anytime while I'm designing, I have a tendency to turn things into smart objects because it's gonna retain those pixels regardless of the size. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It is, right? Whatever frame it's in, we'll do an undo there. And how do we do that? Smart object, if there's anything you learn from me, this should be uh, near the top of the list, convert to smart object, bam. Now this layer one, otherwise known as, known as bookshelf, I wanna see other people's bookshelves. Like what is behind you? This is the best thing about like this whole working from home life that we're dealing with now is I get to see what people's home life is kind of like and I'm kind of into it. So I wanna, I wanna know what's on your bookshelf. You're gonna have to tell me. We could shrink it down. Anytime I have something really large, do you see what I was doing here? I was grabbing it in, pull it in, pull it in. Right, you could do that, but if it's really huge, just go up here to your options bar at the top, right? Instead of it being typically as 100, I can come in and say, you know, just make it 40, done, right? 40%, something like that. There, we'll do that, and it's all good. I'm so happy to be here, by the way. Can I just say that out loud? It could be the, the, the caffeine coursing through my veins, but honestly, I'm just so happy to see everybody. So this is awesome, by the way. This is a typical situation. First off, this photo, right? It's not looking that great. It needs to be color corrected and all that good stuff. In fact, I'm gonna do an image reveal all just so we can see this whole image. You wanna, do you want a magic button in Photoshop? Again, this is just day one, we're just making a header, but this is a magic button. Keep in mind, this is a smart object. Check this out. We'll go up to filter. We'll go to camera raw filter, okay? <laughs> uh, Cal has a tiny desk in the closet. Cal, I have, I sent out your, uh, I made you a custom uh, face mask, so hopefully you get it soon. Uh, I was kind of in a rush making it, so I apologize. Uh, it should get there. If it doesn't get there within the week, Cal, let me know. But Cal attended uh, and won a face mask when we were designing face masks. Okay, right in here, 
I need to do just a ni nice white balance because it's a little too yellow thanks to this lamp, right? But again, your easy button in here in Camera Raw is right over here, auto. So rather than dealing with uh, needs perspective correction as well. Good job, Sig. You're exactly right. Honestly, yeah, I need to get in that and do it. But right in here, I'm just going to click this auto, bam, and it will go ahead and adjust the shadows, the highlights, everything right in here accordingly. Okay. Yeah, look out for it, Cal. I hope you like it. Um, also, so this is what I did. By the way, did you notice that uh, we actually updated Camera Raw? This is Camera Raw 12.3. Uh, if I want to do a white balance, the issue before, just for you pros out there, is all these little um, uh, icons, all these little buttons were separated from what it actually affected. So the white balance icon was clear over here in previous versions. So if your white balance is up here, go ahead and update Photoshop, update Camera Raw, uh, and then you'll have this new interface. You can go in, click right here, click on what would be uh, typically um, your medium tone, and you can see it shifts the temperature. That's exactly what I'd expect to happen, right? You get the idea, hopefully, there. Click that, done. Uh, let's do some. Uh, yeah. We can do some transformations as well. Let's do a little bit of, just a little bit of vertical. If we wanna do a little bit of that, um, uh, adjusting the perspective. I'm going down into manual transformations and I'm just tilting that a little bit vertical plus eight and that's standing it up a little bit more and that looks pretty good. Okay, click okay, boom. I have another, uh, ooh, I have about nine minutes. This is great. Uh, what's up, Steven? Welcome. Uh, oh, you like my figures? I got my, like, I got Thor. I got like a mini, a little mini me. There's a mini 3D printed version of me. I got this in Cuba. Is Does anybody remember these characters? Uh, Andrew Cavanaugh might, but this is um, from Adobe Max, probably eight, 10 years ago. And we had this little flash monkey. They were all these series of uh, icons, which are pretty cool, or um, characters. Guys, this guy's a newer one, right? We have the hovering art director. Nine, notice how I put him in the corner facing away from all my stuff. I'm like, I don't need it right now. I'm not ready. <laughs> right? Here's my high school yearbooks. You get the idea. Okay. 3D printing, which you could also do from Photoshop, which is really cool. These are 3D printed. Uh, that I created with little C4D action. This was also 3D printed, which can be done in, in Photoshop. Uh, and again, more He-Man and fun stuff like that. So anyways, that's my bookshelf. Been working at Adobe for a long, long time. So here's some congratulations. You've survived uh, situation, uh, images, whatever. All right, cool. Uh, oh, Marsha has the hovering art director. Cool. Yeah, you want a mini me, you could actually, when, when 3D printing first hit and was really big, you can go to places, depending on your area, if you're in a big city, you could get scanned and then they'd 3D print a version uh, of you. So uh, here's another 3D printing of me right here. Just kidding, that's Thor, pop character. Let's move on because we have this setup. We have this text right here, right? We wanna make this darker, this bookshelf darker, right? So this text stands out. Right down here, we'll just go to our adjustment layers and we'll throw on, I don't know, I like levels, maybe brightness and contrast. Since this is only day one, we'll start at the top with a little brightness and contrast. We'll take this brightness down, right? And now we can see uh, that text pop out a lot more. So that works out pretty well. Uh, Yes, nice. Oh, I like that, Massimiliano. You could uh, write the title of the project in different places on my shelf. That would be really cool. This is roughly how, what we're going to tackle kind of going forward. It's going to be all these different subjects, and I can hardly read those, but we're going to talk about filter gallery. We're going to kind of start on this end, but we'll be covering individual books 
um, and uh, still based on um, certain uh, classics, right? So here we are, you can see that. Turned this a little bit green. Wow, that's a little weird, right? The cool thing is, since this is a smart object, it adds that camera raw as a filter. I could always double click on that, go in here and adjust some more. So I could change the tint to be a little bit more uh, red as opposed to green, click OK. That's probably the easiest thing we can do to kind of change it. It didn't change it a whole lot. Well, let's get rid of those greens like that. A little bit more drastic. You get the idea, click OK. All right, cool. Uh, we have that done. I'm gonna just move through this really fast. I'm going to actually do a blur, so filter. We're gonna go into blur gallery. We're just going to actually go into blur. We're gonna go into Gaussian blur. We're just gonna blur out that background just a little bit, right, like that. And uh, that's kind of what I'll go with. I'll go to canvas size. My canvas size, again, was 1400 by about 300, like so. Click OK. There's my header. Uh, from there, an easy export, quick export as JPEG. Let's first save this file to my desktop. Boom, boom. This is, we'll just call this title. Export, quick export as JPEG. There it is on my desktop, like so. So now I can go into this project. Right up here at the very top, we can add an image. Sure enough, there's my title. We can add it like so. And again, this is just day one. Um, we could save this as a draft, but I'm gonna actually gonna click through Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Hopefully you're being challenged every day in a good way, because I think anybody who's learning is is growing and you're just so much, uh, such more positive person in general. Um, Photoshop uh, challenges, I'll throw my name in there, why not? Photoshop is what being is being used. Nothing, uh, nothing crazy in here, by the way. You know, it's not that crazy. I can upload an image right here. Let's just grab, um, let's grab this title JPEG, right, for the thumbnail. Oh, I needed to make it a little larger. That's okay. Let's just grab this bookshelf for now. The thing is, this is going to be a draft, so it's not that big of a deal. We'll load this up. And uh, yeah, we have some illustration coming up next, so stick around. Uh, oh, thank you, Tim. Or Sam. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> I think I was looking at Tim's name at the same time. But um, anyways, this can just be temporary. That's all I want to do, right? Um, how do I categorize this? This is going to be photography. Uh, graphic design related as well. Um, it's not gonna contain adult content. Uh, I could save this as a draft because what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna start dropping in a number of, uh, a bunch more content basically, right? So right in here, this is where I'm gonna add. And this is where you get a sneak peek at the new projects, right, that we will be working on right in here. Uh, some fantastic books I'm really excited about. We, of course, have Frankenstein. Um, I mentioned Jane Eyre. We have uh, George Orwell's 1984. We have Invisible Man. Lots of, basically, um, fiction books. Oh, my mouse is... Maybe the batteries are dying. All right, let's just grab this. This is ridiculous, but again, I only have about two minutes. Just when I thought I had a lot of time. Here's a little pro feature right over here. We can go into the mixer brush, right? So we'll get into the more into this tomorrow, but mixer brush tool, right? What did I actually do? I actually took a photo of myself and I said, hey, you know what? Let's make myself look kind of like I'm a writer, okay? So let's make me look like a writer. Let's go in here. Uh, we're gonna make sure it's gonna sample all layers and I can kind of smudge content around like I'm doing right now. So I'm just smudging this picture to make it look like a painting, right? It's pretty simple. I can adjust the brush size, right? And uh, my next step for this is to bring in all of this um, uh, corrosion, if you will, and map that to my face. But that's for tomorrow. All I'll do today is I'll export this out, do a quick export as a JPEG to the desktop, right, like that. We're gonna be doing a picture of Dorian Gray tomorrow, which will be pretty cool. And uh, it's all about touching up 
uh, like a photo of yourself, a selfie or whatever. Um, and then even doing the opposite, making things look better or worse, depending on what you're going for. Um, but again, if this was day one, this is what we'd load up, right? And uh, I'll just publish this out, which I might immediately regret, but just so you have the link so you can see it as my friends, please be kind. Again, this is just the very beginning. Uh, you get the idea. But we're going to learn a lot about uh, some classic novels and uh, everything. And I want to hear from you. Like, I think everybody needs to have, like, a favorite book. And I want to know yours. So this will be a good time. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you, everyone. We're kind of winding down. And uh, if we take a look at the schedule right now, we can see. If I can click over here. There we are. Yeah, we have a little drawing and painting with Tyler Pate. I don't know Tyler, but I'm going to get to know him in a second. So this is going to be really fun. So thanks so much, everyone. Tune in for Tyler, who's up next. And by the way, this is a kickoff for everybody, because Julia is going to be doing Illustrator. Uh, we have an XD Daily Creative Challenge as well today. And I'm just, I'm just really happy to be here. And I, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate you guys. And uh, I can't wait to uh, have some fun this week. So thanks, everybody. Stick around for Tyler, a little drawing, painting, illustration, magic. Thanks so much, everyone.